good day and welcome back. Today we're going to be using, I'm talking about using controller alias. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to speed through refactoring the code, which is just a way of organizing the code as it's, since it's growing. And this is going to be good to show you some way, one way that you can reorganize the code so that as you continue adding more feature and capabilities, which we're going to continue to do, it's just easier to manage. And so no new feature in the to-do application, just code refactoring. The new thing we're covering today and the one and only concept is using aliases. And we're going to see two ways of using controller aliases. So let's jump in. Let's go back a little bit before we move forward. And that is the idea of revisiting this slide that we had when we introduced nested scope. We said that if you had nested scope where a new controller, a controller introduces scope, that um, if it's nested and a value couldn't, a variable couldn't be resolved in a, a nested scope, it would kind of keep moving out to the parent scope and just keep going up that way. So I just removed those boxes so you can see the code. So if you look at line 15, if text couldn't be resolved or a value for text wasn't provided by the full controller, it would actually look in the bar controller for the value of text. And then if it didn't find it there, it would look in main controller. And now that we know about root scope, if it didn't find it in main controller, it would actually check the root scope, which you actually don't see here, but three viewers use root scope already. So now let's just try and look at what things might look like if you really wanted to say full text should be resolved by full controller only, and that's it. Well, if you look at this new um, piece of code here, you'll see that though, for each controller I've introduced an alias. So main controller is the alias main and so on. And so by saying now in the HTML template on line 15, that foo.text is the variable name, what I'm really saying is that text should be looked up in the scope of foo, and scoop, foo is the alias for an instance of the foo controller. And you can apply the same logic to all the others. And so you can see now that if foo really doesn't, don't provide a value for text, it wouldn't be resolved anywhere else. And so this is going to be good when you have complex forms and you want to ensure that maybe something don't get resolved somewhere else that you didn't intend. And so now we can jump in and just look at some code, um, a live demo using this. Okay, so we're just talking about um, using controller have, has, um, you know, controller alias, sorry. <laughs> um, and we look at some of the benefit. We didn't really see it in code, but we kind of, uh, we didn't see it being used. We just look at the code. And so I explained already why you might want to do it so that you don't confuse when you have nested scope. Uh, when we looked at this uh, before, if, if you have nested scope, you won't get foo.title confused with goo.title. And so let's see how that's actually used. So our first example is very simple. We have a main controller and we say controller as main. And then now for this title that's provided, this value, the value for title that's provided by this controller, well, since we have a controller alias here called main, well, that's going to be used to kind of scope this variable, right? So we need to put that on there. So we say main, this is coming from the controller whose alias is main, um, and then look up the title value there. And here we could see that's running. And what is title from the main controller? Well, here's the main controller. And this is how title is set on it. As you can see, there's a difference when you decide to use alias controller, al controller alias, is that you don't actually explicitly put the scope there and pass it in and set it as an object. Instead, you do something that we talk a little bit about when we, we, we first introduced the JavaScript in chapter five, which is that functions are objects and they can have properties. And so what we're saying here is this function has a property called title. So each instance of this function that you create will have this property title. We didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, but the more you play a Java script, you're gonna see, um, you know, you're gonna get exposed to using function and their properties to implement classes. And I'm doing quotes that you can see, air quotes. But, uh, so this is the idea, is that we have a function, we're gonna assign to this function, an instance of this function, the, this title property. And so therefore, when Angular creates, uh, when Angular sees as, it creates a new instance of this controller and it assigns it to what you could think of as a variable named main, and hence why we can say main.title because name 
is pointing to an instance of this function. And since we're using the property of the function, we can say, you know, that title. So hopefully that's not too confusing. Um, just kind of look at it, um, play with it, and that's just always done, just accept it for now. And here's how we used to do it before. So you'll see the two ways, and I think you'll be fine. Just accept it for now, and the more you play with the tech code, it's going to, um, you, you stay in developing application, the more it's going to make sense and you're going to learn it. Um, so don't worry if you don't get it exactly the first time, just accept it. So here's the second example, and I haven't changed anything here. I just want to show now that in addition to um, using alias, when you put it on the directory itself, you can use it on your route. So the way you use it on your route is you simply add this attribute called controller as, and then you give the alias there the name of the alias there as a string. And so you can see home, we were just using it the old way we've been doing it with scope, but here we wanted to use an alias. So of course we have to change the implementation for the page one controller, as we said, right? So page one controller now doesn't take a scope, but instead it assigns to the, this function using this, this variable title. And of course, since we're using an alias, then in our template, for page one, we have to use the name of this um, alias. So there you go, all right? And that's all there is, and this one also works equally well, right? Very straightforward, very simple, I hope. All right, so please play it, practice it, and that's it. So the next thing we're gonna move on to is just refactoring the to-do application. There's nothing new, no feature or anything, just want to show you how refactoring the code makes it look nice and neat, as you can see the end result here. But I'll go through and show you how I got there. Okay, so before I actually start refactoring the code, I have to fix a bug. I'm going to do that real fast. And the bug is we introduced this edit in section, well, I introduced it somewhere in the previous section, 13 or section 12. And it's basically from the list, when you check something complete, it would tick it off, but it wouldn't actually update the individual, um, the object itself. And that's because we didn't, I didn't add the set completed method on the list controller that would actually call into the database to say update this particular task and then refresh the list. And so you can see it from the whole code and you can see it here. So I'm going to speed up fixing this um, bug and then continue with the editing. Now the fix is pretty simple. It's just me adding the set completed um, callback on the list controller. And because it's already being called from the list from the list view, um, it's just that we did, I didn't, I missed at some point when I uh, refactored the code the last time, putting it on the list controller. So I'm gonna call that and then if I can successfully update this particular task, then what I'm gonna do is just refresh the list of tasks. And so that's gonna correctly reflect on the UI, you know, the, the updated state of the task. So let me just do that and then we'll get back to refactoring the code. So that's done and everything is working fine. So now I'm gonna focus on refactoring the code. And basically I'm gonna do is just create a bunch of uh, several files in which to put the task service in its own file, JavaScript file, each task controller, so task list, task edit, task um, new, is gonna go in its own JavaScript file. Um, I'm gonna move all the route um, rules, the route and rules for the task into the app itself. So you look in one place and you could see the entire navigation for the app. That just kind of makes sense instead of having to go a number of different places, but for really large application, you're gonna see that though you might actually wanna split out your routing, you know, when you have really large modules and maybe possibly a number of other individuals working on the project. But, and of course, since I'm gonna create in multiple JavaScript files, I need to update my index.html um, to include those files. And you can see the application is still working the same way even when I split it out, which is to be expected, it's just different JavaScript files and it just makes things easier to be able to manage this way. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact same thing for the user um, file. Just split it out into a number of files and again test it and make sure that everything is working. And you can slow it down to see, um, I didn't cut anything out, you just slow it down if you like. I don't know if YouTube didn't allow you to slow it down as much as 
<laughs> you need to, to, to in order to be able to see it, but hopefully. And so that's it. It's really pretty straightforward with factoring. And you'll see that our application directory is going to look much, much better with it um, refactored. Um, as you can see here, now that I'm finished refactoring, um, I'm going to test and everything is going to look work the same exact way. Okay, so the only other thing I didn't show in the video because it is boring to look at just refactoring code um, is that I created some, some new directories also, some directories. So I created a controller directory, a services directory, a view directory. I moved the files into their appropriate trial, um, files into the directories. And of course, I had to update the routing rules here to say that now the templates are in the view directory, um, the views directory. Mm -hmm. But you can see that there, and again, still works. The code is on GitHub. You can check it out. No trickery, nothing, um, no sleight of hand here. I hope I've been able to teach you something again in this video. Um, play with it. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Spread the word. Visit often. Let me know if you have issues, concerns, questions, you want me to cover something else or revisit something. All right. Thanks for your time, and see you. Take care. Bye.